Daylight has found me here again You can ask me anything but where I've been Hi, I'm Indy O'Connor. I'm going to show you in this video uh, the basic steps that we use in our groundwork when we're preparing our horse uh, to be ridden. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, strategies out there for getting our horse prepared. Um, this is what I've learned uh, works for me. We're going to use a lot of the principles of uh, pressure and release. Uh, this is something you can do with your horse right out of the pasture. Uh, come uh, springtime, if it's a horse that's been uh, laying around uh, all winter, uh, hasn't been ridden, hasn't been played with much, this would be something to be very helpful for you. Uh, to get them prepared to be ridden and, and, and used uh, in the spring and summertime. Um, this horse here, uh, is, her name is Misty, and she is a five-year-old quarter horse. She um, has, uh, is a, one of the horses that we board at our facility. She's uh, about five years old. She, she doesn't know a lot. She knows some things. I've played around with her just a little bit. So um, you're going to get an opportunity to see how uh, I would work with a horse that I didn't know very well, um, a horse that doesn't um, have a lot of experience with this. Um, this, this, uh, this horse, as you might uh, be able to tell um, as we go through, uh, she's got some battle scars, so to speak, uh, some, some, some parts on her that uh, where the hair has been kind of pulled. She's out in a pasture in a natural environment with uh, eight other horses, and she has found herself on the low end of the totem pole. So she gets moved around quite a bit, um, but uh, she still has a real good try in her. So we're going to see what we can get done with Misty today. Um, I'm been going to uh, go as slow as I can to kind of explain what I'm doing. Uh, we're going to take some time also in this video to show you how to tie the, the halter correctly. Um, and also, uh, what I'm looking for when I say trying to get a soft feel. Uh, a lot of what I do is about getting a soft feel with the horse and being able to move the horse uh, with that soft feel instead of having to use uh, a lot of pressure. My method, uh, if you're unfamiliar with me, it stems a lot uh, from the tradition laid down by Tom Dorrance, Ray Hunt, and Buck Brannon. But I have my own style and I don't do things exactly as they do, but uh, I look to them as being uh, true pioneers in this type of horsemanship. So without uh, any other delay, we're going to get her started here. You can see that she's a little, there's some, some hay on the ground here. Uh, what I'm looking for right now is just to see what her respect uh, uh, and attention level is. She's a little more interested right now in eating. So a lot of times I, when I work with people, they, they see this as normal behavior, and, and it is normal behavior, but it's, they, they tolerate this. When you're working with your horse, it's very important to understand that this animal, even though she looks real calm and, and at ease in this place, um, in this uh, new environment for her, um, this is not where we live. We are using another facility, so this is a new environment. Even though she looks at ease, you can't take that for granted. She's still uh, looking around uh, and sensing her environment, and you can't mistake this for just being a horse. Well, I can just throw a saddle on and get going with her. You need to get some things done with her first. Uh, one of the things I'm going to say a lot in this video is that you have to uh, own those feet. You have to be able to control those feet. If you can't, uh, you're going to find yourself in a little bit of trouble. And your horse is going to get in trouble. And that's, that's uh, not what we want. We want to help our horses through the trouble. One other, one other thing I'm going to mention to you is that what I'm showing you today, I kind of consider to be tools for a toolbox. You're going to be continually adding to your toolbox as uh, horsemen and women. And you should have the ability that when your horse gets a little lost, that you can pull that uh, tool out of that toolbox and help them um, get, get, get found again and, and get back on the right track. So the first thing I need to do with her is I need to get her attention. I'm just going to kind of tip her nose a little bit to me, and I'm going to take my, the end of my lead rope, and I'm just going to kind of uh, toss it towards her, or swing it towards her hindquarters, and just say, wake up for me. When a horse yields its hindquarters for you, that's a sign of respect. 
I'm going to kind of get that a little bit there. This is what they do when they're out into their natural environment and the herd boss uh, is, is trying to move them away from, from the hay or, or getting them to want to follow them. They will get those hindquarters to yield. And if the horse doesn't, doesn't yield those hindquarters, then the, the herd boss will take it up to another level and start to increase the pressure. See there, she was a little late in moving those hindquarters, so I, I added the pressure a little bit. Now that I have her attention a little bit, and it's okay to, to kind of tap on that, on that uh, rope halter. All of the groundwork that I do uses a rope halter. I do not use a broadband halter for anything, not even transporting horses in a trailer. I use a, a rope halter exclusively. The reason is that the rope halter um, provides uh, pressure uh, where I need it. And it does it uh, as gradually or as sharply as, as my hand uh, squeezes or pulls. But it also then releases that pressure immediately when I release. So on a broadband halter, the horse can push and pull against that all day long without getting tired. But with a rope halter, it, it, it makes the pressure a little more localized, a little more intense, but it also releases very quickly. So they learn to respect that pretty quick. And I don't have to use a lot of force to get that done. Okay, so now that I have her attention, and this is one other thing I want to mention, it is not okay for her to start walking towards me just like she did. I didn't ask her to walk towards me. So the minute that she took a step towards me, I'm going to back her up. Now, if she didn't back up, I'd send her away from me, and that would increase the pressure and give her something to do to think through that. But it's very important to understand that those feet are your feet. You can't, move, you can't have her drifting off on the ground, because if you do, she'll drift off in the saddle. And if she's drifting off when you're under saddle with her, you're in an unsafe position. And she's going to know that you didn't direct her feet, and she's going to either take advantage of that, depending on the horse, or they're going to feel that they need to protect themselves. And so they're going to not trust your leadership, and then you're in trouble. And that's where a lot of accidents happen. So you can see that she's waiting patiently, um, it's okay if she's looking around. I don't care about that. That's not a bother to me. Uh, her head is relaxed. She's just not moving her feet. And that's, that's what I wanted right now. Got a nice respectful distance from her. So the first thing that I do, especially when I'm working with an unfamiliar horse, I take the end of my lead rope, and I'm going to toss that lead rope around the neck of my horse, just like that. I'm trying not to slap her with it. This takes some practice. You're not going to get this right the first time. And most of the time, people get frustrated um, with this type of horsemanship, uh, with the, the equipment, because it's awkward. Most people aren't used to having the control of the rope like that. And so one of the things I tell people is to take the, the lead rope and practice it at home. Practice it on something that's stationary, um, out in your garage perhaps, wood post, your spouse, if they trust you. <laughs> and if, it's, if it doesn't feel good to your spouse, then you know it's not going to feel good to your horse. Now, my lead rope is 15 feet long. It's the lead rope that we've designed for our method. And it has a leather popper on the end. So the leather popper adds pressure when I need it. But the lay of the rope is, is uh, soft, and, but yet firm enough that when I throw it, there's a little weight to it. And it'll sling down. And this actually becomes a little pleasing to the horse. It kind of, the horse kind of remembers this a little bit when it, when it was a fall. Its mother would do this with its tail and kind of tell, tell the foal that everything's okay. It's also a way that the, the mother would flip flies off of the, the foal. And if she wanted to reach down there, see how she wants to lean down there and, and eat, I didn't want her to do that. So I'm just gonna back her up a little bit, get her to move her feet and get her to think, okay? There we go. Now every time that, that I get her attention like that, I have to reward her with some, uh, I'll rub on her. You can't really rub on her enough. You can't, you can't really do that enough to, to be able to get them to understand that being with you is a good place to be. Okay, the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the end of this lead rope, not just flip it around her neck, but I'm also gonna flip it over her back. And what I'm looking for here is her comfort level of having something thrown over her back. See how she wants to walk there. She took a step. 
Now, if she starts to move here and gets a little uncomfortable with this, I'm going to allow her to move, but I'm going to continue to keep my hand motion going. Okay? I'm looking for her to tolerate this being thrown over the back, just like I might with a saddle. And I want to prepare my horses to feel things on both sides. Most horses get saddled on and everything done on the left side. But there might become a time when you need to do it on the right side. Don't forget that other side. See how she decided to move there a little bit? So as she decides to move, I'm just going to keep up my, my motion here until she stops. Now when she stops, then I'm going to rub her. And let her know that this is, just standing here and tolerating this is the good thing. That's the good deal. You're going to hear me say that a lot. A good deal and a bad deal. You're offering your horse a good deal. The good deal right now is just to stand here this way and be relaxed. Now that I've got her feeling that going over her, her midsection, I'm going to start doing it over her rump a little bit. Because you never know, you might get going to get on your horse and you lose your balance just a tad and your back foot bumps the rump. The last thing you want, pay attention, there you go. Last thing you want is that horse to start walking off as you're trying to get on. Or worse, you got spinning or, or bolting off. You have your other foot in the, in the stirrup and you have your hand caught in the reins and you have a disaster there. So I want her to feel, be used to feeling things back here. As I bump up, I might bump. I might bump her with my foot. So I'd rather have her be able to stand still for me as I do this here on the ground before I'm trying to get on her. These are just little things that people don't often take into consideration, but they make a big difference in not only your safety, but also your, your partnership with your horse. You can kind of see that her back leg there is kind of cocked. It shows me that she's getting a little more um, relaxed with what we're doing here. Okay, once I've done that on that side, I've got to do it on the other side. Now you see how she kind of, this is something you've got to notice with your horse. You're looking for all of the, the uh, body language that your horse is giving you. As I started to walk to her right side, she started to block me off. Not unlike a lot of horses, uh, Misty here is a little uncomfortable with things on her right side. So I'm going to try that again. This time as I walk, I'm going to put my hand, the back of my hand, just on, the, on her right side. And I'm going to rub and let her know that it's okay for me to be there. You know, a lot of people will just say, oh, just push her away and just kind of bump her over and just go to the right side. You can certainly do that and that might work for you, but why? Why do that? Why not just be a little more polite with your horse, have a little more respect for this near 1,000 pound animal that you're going to get on and expect to do what you want it to do and get through a ride safely? Why not just be a little bit more polite, just rub and say, you know what, it's okay for me to be. In fact, when I'm over here, you get rubbed. That's a good deal. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing unmanly about that. That's the way it should be. I dare say if, if those guys out there were, were uh, going on the opposite side of the couch to sit by their wife and their wife didn't want to want to move right away, and their wife and they, and they kind of push their wife out of the way, that, that relationship isn't going to last long. I know where I'd be sleeping at night. A very cold place. So we need to be polite. We need to be respectful of our horse. I mean, after all, we're trying to develop a partnership and a relationship. Okay, so now as I'm flipping this, this uh, lead rope over her neck, see how she kind of got a little uncomfortable with that? So I just put my hand there to block, and then I rub. So I guess this one, one way to think about this is that you're blocking, but you're rubbing. You're saying, uh, don't, don't tip your head and push me away. And if you just tolerate that, you'll get a nice rub from me. Good. Now I like to, to uh, saddle my horses from the right side. I find that, it, that one thing is helpful because it's, it's constantly working your horse's tolerance and, and every time anything you do with your horse should be a training or teaching moment. So that's one reason I like to do it because 
they have a hard time, some, some horses have a harder time uh, dealing with something on their right side, as she is showing me here. But the other reason is that it's just easier to, I don't have to throw the cinch and all that other stuff over. Instead of throwing that cinch and everything over the horse from the other side, the only thing that's going over is really is the stirrup. So now we're concentrating on her back. And when I go to saddle this horse up later, she's going to get saddled from the right side. Now the first time when I worked with this horse and we put a saddle on her, she was real uncomfortable with it coming over her back like that. She's gotten a lot better. She's just not used to having somebody over here on her right side and doing stuff. Good girl. She had to block there. Just had to block there. Let her work through this. Give her time. I'm just using my arm as a block and then rubbing. Pay attention to me. Now, if this continues, I'll maybe move her feet forward a little bit to get her to think. Right now, she's backing up. She feels the need to move. I'm not asking her to stop because I wanted to work through this trouble. And I wanted to think that I helped her work through that trouble. That's better. That's better. Good. And I'll do it on her rump. You might get a little bit antsy about that. She's doing real well though with this. For a horse that's young, She's got something flying in her blind spot. There she had a little bit of a little bit of a bump. What I like here is that she's not feeling like she has to move forward. She tolerated that real good. So just in the first few minutes, you're getting a lot done just with the end of that lead rope. And this may not seem like much to you, but it makes a big deal to your horse. And it's going to make a big deal when you start doing things with your horse. So now I'm just going to take the end of my lead rope and I'm going to throw it around her legs. I want to see if she's okay with, with something being around her feet. She's real good with that. Now when she's starting to block me off and walk forward, I don't want her walking forward. If she needs to move, she can move backwards. There we go. Remember, always be conscious of where those feet are. So we're going to do a lot with this horse on the right side. And you can tell, I'm sure from the video, that where most of her, the, where the hair has been kind of bitten off from the other horses moving her around, is on her right side. So she's a little bit sensitive for good reason on this side. Good. So those are just kind of the first things that I'll do with my horse, or with a horse that, that is just learning, to kind of get them used to uh, that rope being thrown around and uh, mimicking what I would do with a saddle. Okay? Now, before I, I do anything else with this horse, I need to uh, kind of give a little bit of an explanation of, of a soft feel. My explanation might be very different than, than other people. Um, there are a lot of different explanations or definitions of what a soft feel is. But essentially what I'm looking for is the horse to give to me with the slightest amount of pressure possible. Ideally, I'd like to be able to release the pressure that, that uh, I'm in giving her just prior to her giving. So it's seamless to the point where she almost thinks that she gave to pressure, that she took it off of herself. So one of the things I'm going to do before I get to doing it with her is I'm going to ask someone to come out here and kind of um, hold the end of this rope. Tina, if you'll come on out. Okay, this is something that you can do with, um, with your spouse or with a friend uh, so that you understand what, what that, that feel and that give means. And so that the person on the other end gets a feel for it too. So I'm just going to start to take a hold of this rope. She's going to hold on, and 
when, when she lets go, I want you to hold until I get to about there. Now, then I'm going to release. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to hold. And as soon as she releases, I release. It has to be almost like that this rope has an electric current going through it. And the second that you feel that horse to release, you release. Ideally, you want to get it to the point where you almost are, are simultaneous. Okay? Now, if you just hold that there, I'm going to add a little bit more pressure. I'm not going to pull Tina here over or anything. But what I'm going to do is, I'm not, you might ask, well, what do you do when the horse doesn't give? And the horse just keeps pulling on there. Well, I just sit here. I'm just going to hold. And eventually, she'll feel, the horse will decide, and if I just give, maybe that'll happen. Okay? So, thank you, Tina. That's what you can do at home with a friend or with, with a spouse, like I said. You can kind of, both of you get to feel that give and that take together. Now, you want to use a good rope that has a good feel to it. I do not recommend a cotton rope. It doesn't have the same feel. So you're going to want to get some sort of poly braid or non nylon braid rope that's a, that's a good heavy rope, has a good feel to it. Okay? So now when we work with her, that's what I'm looking for. And horses are very sensitive. They're going to give to you uh, sometimes before you even anticipate it. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask her, can I have my flag, please? One of the other tools that, that I use is a flag. Thank you. Um, my stick, about four feet long, and it has a flag on the end. And what I do with this is this is just an extension of my, of my hand. So this is something new that, uh, to her, uh, at least at this moment. So before I start flipping the flag around, I need to get her to feel comfortable with it. She has seen this flag before. She's worked a little bit with it, so she knows um, that it's not something necessarily that's going to hurt her. Okay? But I'm not going to take that for granted. I've only worked with her a few times. So I want to rub her. I want to be able to let the flag do its natural movement. Now, if your horse, when it sees this flag or a flag, starts to back up or starts to, to move around you, you're going to just keep that, that motion up, just like she did this move here. I'm just going to keep the motion up here until she decides to stop. But not just stop, but stop and relax. Then I'm going to go to trying to rub her a little bit with that flag. Okay? So I'm not going to take for granted that she is okay with this. Everything is new to her to what we're introducing to her. And I'm going to use it on both sides. I'm not getting too crazy with it. I just want to make sure that I can rub her with this flag as if it were an extension of my hand, rubbing it all over. You never know. You might be riding and a bird flies out of the brush. Okay, it might startle your horse a little bit if it's not expecting it. But a horse that's seen this movement will be able to recover a lot quicker than a horse that's never been introduced to it. So I want to make sure I can rub her all over with this. Once I've, I've found that I can, she's pretty tolerant of, of this flag all over, even underneath her here, okay, she knows it's there. She's tolerated that really well. And part of that is because of the things I was just doing before, I got her to, to understand that it's in her best interest just to stand and just relax. Now, there's nothing that I'm doing is going to hurt her. All right, now that I've got her okay with that, I'm going to turn up and raise the bar. I'm always trying to raise the bar for my horses. So I'm going to take the flag and I'm going to start maybe two or three, uh, waving it just like that. And if she stays nice and calm for me, then, when, then I'll go ahead and rub her. I'll do it on both sides. The right side might be for your horse a little bit, see how she wants to move a little bit, because that right side, she feels the need to protect it. Now, she didn't really relax there when she stopped, but I get, she was a try. So I'm going to reward that little try, that slight try there, and say, that's good, that's what I'm looking for. I'll go back to it. Good. 
She really handled that well. She's still, as you can see, still kind of wanting to bl block me off from going on that side. That was better. You gotta work with that with your horse. Don't take those things for granted. I've seen horses, I've had horses in my clinics that will go around the, the arena uh, counterclockwise, or clockwise rather, and do just fine. But when asked to go counterclockwise, where the, the right eye is on the outside, uh, on, on the, yeah, the outside of the arena, and somebody might be sitting there in the audience with, with a, a camera that flashes, or you know, for the outside maybe an umbrella, and they saw it with their left eye, you, you would assume that the right side would be just fine with it. And all of a sudden they just go nuts. Because they, they see things differently on both sides and they have a sense that they need to protect themselves perhaps more on one side than the other. So you've got to prepare them for that. Don't take that for granted. And if you find a place that's a little touchy for your horse, where they have a little more anxiety over it, work with that. Don't neglect it. With it, because it will pay dividends in the future. Okay, so I'm going to rub her all over underneath her. That's real good there. Now I know that you're, you might be saying at home, well, my horse would not stand still for that flag being underneath it like that. Well, it might not stand that way to begin with. So you're going to, what you're going to do is if you start to approach your horse with the flag and she starts to move off, you're just going to keep that action up and go with your horse. Don't try to make your horse stand still. Let them drift a little bit. Let them move. Keep that energy up with the flag. And as soon as they stop, then you stop. And then you can go back. You might start over here where you would rub a little bit and just kind of go like that and then back off. Do a little bit of an approach and retreat. And then back off. Once your horse decides that whatever that is isn't going to kill it, they start to tolerate it and become a little curious about it. So use the nature of the horse for that. Okay, now that I've got her willing to stand for me, uh, wave that flag back and forth, up and around her, don't neglect up here. Sometimes horses that are a little bit bigger than some of the draft size horses, or the warm bloods, they're not used to seeing things above their head. They're usually the tallest thing out there. So if your horse, if you're doing this and your horse starts to move off, you're going to continue this, go with your horse, go with them until they stop and relax, and then you can stop and rub. Okay? Misty's doing really, really well here with this. Like I said, she's been exposed to some of this already. But it's, it's, uh, you never take advantage that she can do that every time. Okay, now that she's used to moving the flag around, I have to get her to understand that there are times when this rope and this flag means move. Right now, before I wanted her just to stand still for me. So the next step that I do with, with these new horses to get them prepared for uh, being ridden and ridden well when I'm doing my groundwork is I'm going to ask this horse now to move out. Before I do that, when I'm riding these horses, especially to start with, and we're starting in a snaffle bit, I use Makate reins. And what, when I want my horse to turn right, I'm going to open up that side. I'm going to turn my body such that my left side is adding pressure to the left, to the outside of the horse. And there's the open space. There's the good deal that I want the horse to move into. But she has to know, this horse needs to know that when I move the reins that way, and she feels that direction, that she needs to know to follow that feel and move in that direction. So th we are using the reins for direction, but we're not, they're not necessarily our steering wheel. You're using your whole body to ride, but we're going to get into that when we start the riding part. But to set that up for this horse, I'm going to ask her to, I'm going to start, I'm going to ask her to go to my right. I'm going to point first. I'm going to step across and point. She feels that, that little bit of a tug, and she thought about moving off to my right. Okay? She didn't move, so now I'm going to take the flag. I'm just going to lift it up and start to add pressure on this side. If she's still up there, she took a step. So I'm going to release. Now I'm going to turn this pressure up a little bit as we go. As she starts to show me that she understands, I'm going to raise the bar. 
Again, I'm going to step across. There, she took a step. Now I took my hand down. I release and let her go. It should take almost just that amount of energy just to have her go around me. Now she's kept a, a sizable distance from me. Now I'm not continuing to point. That's very important. When you do this, don't hold that point with the lead rope. Otherwise you'll confuse her. That's just like when your horse goes the direction you want when you're asking the horse to turn, you don't keep holding your hand out that way. As soon as they go the direction you want, you put the hand back and let that pressure come off. Now, if I wanted her to, to speed up her, her uh, gait a little bit, maybe go to a trot, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the flag, and I'm just going to, there, just that little bit. And where I put the pressure when I wave that flag is right towards her, uh, where the girth would come down in her saddle. And the reason for that is that's where my legs are going to be. So when I ask my horse to go to a trot, I use my legs to add pressure and say move up to the next speed. So I don't, uh, I try to get it done there at the girth spot even with the flag to prepare her for that. Now I'm going to ask her to stop and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to tip her nose to me a little bit and I'm going to take the flag and I'm going to drive, try to drive those hindquarters away from me and get a yield. Now, it's not a complete yield. The complete yield would be with those, those feet, or she's more actually right in front of me. I have both eyes, and those, those feet aren't dead. That's a little better. Okay? That's how I'm going to get my horse to stop. And I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to rub. Now, it's very important that she understands what go means, but that she also understands that not everything means go. So I'm just going to take this flag. Good. She didn't move off. I want her to know that when I do this, it means to move off. And that there are times that I'm going to ask her to move her speed up a little bit. Just that little point. Just that little point towards the midsection. Now she's pulling up the circle for me a little bit, and I'm just letting that drift through there a little bit. She has a total of 14 feet 11 inches to go at this point. But that's it. One thing that's very important to note here is that if your horse is slinging its head to the outside of the circle, that is not respectful. That is not a good deal. If she were doing that, I'd be just bumping. I'd just bump her nose back towards me. I don't want her slinging her head to the outside. If she were closer to me, if she was slinging her head to the outside, she'd be in a position where she could kick me. And I don't want her attention to the outside, I want her attention inside. Now this is not lunging. I'm not doing this to get my horse tired before I ride her so she doesn't give me a bad ride. This is about communication. So now I'm going to tip her nose and I'm going to drive those hindquarters away a little bit more. And what I'm doing here to drive those hindquarters away is that I'm starting with a look of being assertive, looking at those hindquarters assertively, like, like a third boss would do. I'm going to go over that a little more here in detail in a second. But then if I need to, I'll take the flag and add some pressure towards those hindquarters. Now, I don't want her to walk off and yield. That's not what I'm asking. So if she walks off, I'll use the end of my line to kind of put some pressure here and say, if you're going to try to walk off, it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. So the good deal is just to move those hindquarters just like that. Now you see she did block me off a little bit. So I'm going to rub. There. That wasn't a full yield, but it was a little better. Now you'll see there that I'm raising the bar. Okay? Those feet are my feet. And when it's time to move those feet, it's time to move those feet. There's a misnomer that natural horsemanship is always and forever lollipops, gun drops, and butterflies. It's sometimes it's a beast thing. Sometimes you have to be assertive. Move those feet over and move them over now. Now, if you think that's a beast thing, that's 
That's nothing. This horse, that's, that's like your horse being bumped with something like a, like a pillow. There's no way that this flag is going to hurt her. It might add some pressure. That's better. One thing I need to say here, before I get her to go the other direction, is that you need to be precise. You need to think precision with your horse. Everything you do. Okay, it is no good to come in and work with your horse if you're concentrating on something outside of your life, on the other part of your life that is distracting you. Some people go and work with their horse um, because it's a little bit of therapy and that's great. But when you walk into that barn and you're gonna work with your horse, you need to give your horse your full attention. You're asking your horse to give your, its full attention to you, then you need to do the same for your horse. And you gotta be mindful of the little things. It's the little things that make the difference. Okay, just that little bit of, of where she was blocked, that's much better. See, I started to walk over to this side and she didn't block me off now. That's a big difference to this horse. This horse has got all of these, these little tufts of hair out from other horses moving her around from that side. That's much better. So be mindful of those little things. They pay big in the end. Okay, so I had her going. Pay attention to me, please. If your horse loses attention, get her to move her feet. Get her to move her feet a little bit. There goes the ears, just looking at me a bit more uh, with attention. Sometimes I lick their lips a little bit to, to say that they're kind of thinking. All right, so she's got, my, she's got uh, her attention on me. I'm going to go the other way. So I have the flag in my right hand. I'm going to step across. Give her the benefit of the doubt. She took a step there. You might be saying, well, she did it just fine going the other way. Why can't she go this way? Don't take that for granted. Not every horse can, can do everything exactly the same on one side as the other. It takes a little time. They think differently on both sides. So I gave her the benefit of the doubt and pointed again. Okay, I'm going to ask her to move her speed up just a little bit. Just by waving that flag towards her midsection there. Be mindful that she's not slinging that head to the outside. Good. And as she goes around nicely for a few times, I'll just tip her nose and I'll drive those hind quarters away. Good. Actually, I missed her stepping there a couple of times and that was my fault. I didn't want her to step, I just wanted her to stop. What do you think is going to happen if you're riding your horse and you ask your horse to stop? If you've not taught it on the ground to stop when you want it to stop, it's going to drift into a stop. Well, you can't drift into a stop. That's not a stop, that's a slowdown. There's a difference. A stop is a stop. And sometimes you've got to stop. <laughs> sometimes you can't afford to drift into a stop. Okay, so be mindful of that. Be careful with that. All right, I'm going to ask her to go across again. I'm going to step across. I'm going to take my flag. I'm going to raise the bar a little bit. She didn't quite go off as quickly as I would expect. She knows what to do now. So as, as uh, I stepped across and she kind of was hesitant to move off, kind of lazy, I just raised the bar by tapping her where the girth would come down. If I had a saddle on her, it would be where the fenders are on the saddle, where the, where the stirrups kind of hang. So now I'm going to tip her nose, drive the hindquarters away a little bit more. No, don't walk off. There. There, now all right. Be careful that when you get that stop that you don't have her stepping forward. Again, that's a slowdown, not a stop, and that's not a yield. There. You see how those front legs stayed put for me? And those, those hind quarters moved. There. You notice how she almost took a step forward and I just kind of blocked her off. You have to be precise with those feet. You don't move them where, I, where you want to go. You move them, move them where I want them to go, not where you want them to go. A little better, a little better. Okay, so that would be the next step that I would do with my horse. I'd get them moving out real, real quickly like that after I've got them used to having the, the rope thrown over them and, and they're used to standing put for the flag. You notice I'm not doing anything with my rope hand, okay? 
This does not mean go. What if I wanted to ride this horse in a parade? I might have to use a flag. That flag is going to be up there like this. And if you're on a drill team with a horse, your horse has to stand put while that flag is flipping in the wind. Okay? And then it's time to go when I do this. Step across and point. Now she knows, so I'm going to add a little bit of pressure. She knows it's time to go, so I'm going to be a little less tolerant of waiting on that. When it's time to go, it's time to go. Now it's time to yield. And I'm going to do something else. I'm going to ask her to go the other way. I'm going to yield and send her across the other way. Yield, step across, send her across the other way. Yield and across the other way. One. Good. And yield. There. Sometimes when your horse is drifting off a little bit, it's just like students in a classroom. Sometimes, you know, your student starts to, you know, I got, I got that math problem that maybe some of the other students haven't gotten it, gotten it down yet. So you're, you're kind of sitting back and kind of drifting off and daydreaming a little bit. Your teacher has to get your attention. And sometimes by turning up the, the, the speed on your horse, asking them to do things a little bit quicker, Gets their attention again. Yield the hindquarters, step across, drive them off. Yield the hindquarters, step across, and drive them off to a yield. A little better, a little better. Oh, don't step forward. There you are. Right there. Okay, so what I'm doing is that I added an element to this leading out exercise to where we, instead of going all the way around me, in a circle, I, I made that circle a half circle. So when, if you imagine that, you're, that um, I'm pointing towards the camera right now, that you're at 12 o'clock. When the horse is going this way and gets to 9 o'clock, you're going to want to ask your horse to turn and go the other way going towards 3 o'clock. Okay? So in order to do that, you've got to, when they get to about, oh, about 9.30, you're going to ask your horse to you know, tip your horse's nose towards you. You're going to drive those hindquarters off so that they're parallel now to you this way. You're going to step across and you're going to point the other way, drive them off. When it gets to about 2.30, I'm going to yield the hindquarters, step across. Yield the hindquarters, step across. And you see how she hopped those front legs over. What I'm setting up now with this is kind of a, a little bit of a roll back, if you will, with her feet. And it's something we're going to do there. Something we're going to do in the saddle that's going to help her be a little more precise on her feet. Now you might be asking, well, why? Why? do we need our horse to be so precise on their feet? Horses think from the ground up. They live and die on these. If they can't move their feet, and they can't move their feet accurately, athletically, and with some sort of speed, they are bait to predators. Okay, so now we're going to work on uh, having her learn to give the pressure and into the back to back up. Um, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to do it first, like I said, with uh, direct pressure, and then we're going to do it with some indirect pressure. What I'm going to do is right down here at the bottom of the, uh, where the, the rope halter is attached to the, the lead rope, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my hand over so my thumb is pointing down. And I'm going to start to very gradually bring those, the, the, uh, the pieces of the rope halter here together. And I'm going to do it very gradually, just like I've been doing everything else. Everything starts with gradual and then moves to a little more force. So here I'm starting to you know, keep my, my thumb pointed down and I'm adding the pressure. And she's a little bit annoyed with that and I'm just going to hold that. And then as soon as she takes a step back, I'm going to release. Now, a lot of people will, will back off 
when the horse starts to uh, lift its head like that and shake its head, you've got to be able to just hang in there with your horse. Let them figure that out. So again, I'm going to start very light, just a touch. And now I'm going to start to squeeze that a little bit more, a little bit more, and I'm just going to hold. I'm at my threshold of squeezing. Let her figure that out. She wants to move forward, but she figures that that's more pressure. So now I'm going to, it's just, I'm at my threshold, I'm going to just bring that there. I'm just going to take my hand and kind of go back and forth with it a little bit to kind of add a little bit more of a dimension of pressure to get, hit, get her to back. One thing that I want to mention too, let me put my flag down here, is that in order, if your horse, if she didn't start off, so I didn't, didn't uh, ask her to lower her head because she was already low, but if your horse has, is, is high headed, the first thing you want to do is get that head to come down a bit. So you're going to put your hand on the paw, your right hand on the paw if you're on, on the left side of the horse, and you're going to take your other hand and just start to pull down a little bit, and a little pressure on the paw as well. She gives to that real well, so um, it's not a problem for her. But I'm going to ask her, every time she, she dips her head down a little bit, then I'll release, and then rub. There. Right about here is where I want her to be, so that when I'm riding her, the purpose of that is that when I'm riding, and I want to back up, I want to get a collected back, a collected back up. So I'm going to ask her to, to lower her heads with the rein, and then bring that chin in a little bit, and then back up. So I don't want her backing with her head real high. Sometimes if they back with their head real high, they're more prone to rear, and they can fall over the other way. So we need to help our horse to be down and collected there. Now that she's down there, I'm going to ask her to bring her chin in, and I'm going to squeeze on that halter just lightly there. Now every time that she, she gives to me, I give to her. And what I'm doing there now is that I'm squeezing that, that rope just like that. Every time she backs up, I release, 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 release. Okay? We'll start again. I'm ask her to come forward just a little bit here. So I'm going to ask her to lower her head again so that we're getting a little bit collected. And now I'm just going to touch that rope this time just to kind of, you can see that, kind of just squeeze it there, release. Now she's, that we don't want. We don't want her to kick her head back up. There. So when she does, I just keep, I just hold my hand. When she starts to lift her head up like she did, I'm just holding. Okay, I don't want to get in a fight with her, but I want her to understand that if you're gonna lift your head up like that, that it's gonna, there's going to be pressure there. And it's much better for you just to, there. Yeah. It's hard to see perhaps on a camera, but I'm barely touching that halter now. There. She's learned that she can get rid of that pressure very easily, simply by just backing up. We're going to come back down. Just bring that head down just a little bit. There. Now, well, I don't want that head up, so I'm going to bring it back down. I'm going to hold. Now, I'm going to see how light we've got her now. Well, bring it down. I'm going to take my finger, my, my pointer finger, and just lift back. Look at that. Just that little bit of a touch. She's learned with that when those, that halter comes there. 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 Good. When she, when she feels that little bit of a tug on the halter, she knows it's time to back up. And that's what you want. You want that horse to, just with that little bit of a, a feel, a little better, there, there, there. And as soon as I stop, she stops. There. Nice. Good. This is what I'm talking about in the beginning, what I was talking about in the beginning about having a soft feel and being able to get your horse to give to you as with a very soft touch. It should only take about an ounce of pressure to move your horse. And if you think about that, you're, you're moving your horse and directing a, a close to a thousand pound animal 
in some cases more, with an ounce of pressure. I mean, horses are sensitive. They can feel flies on their rump outside when they're in the field and they shiver them off. They are very sensitive. They can feel this. Just that little bit of a touch. They can feel that. And if we can teach them what to do with that feel, then we can really start to connect in a, in a very positive way uh, with our horse on the ground and in the saddle. So now when I'm riding and I want her to back, instead of having to do this, all I'm going to have to do is just, just with my fingers, just a little bit of a touch on those Makati reins. And every time she backs, I'm going to release, release, release. That release is the most difficult thing for people to get. A lot of people don't have problems putting the pressure on. It's the release that people have the most trouble with. You've got to be quick. You've got to almost anticipate when your horse is going to give and get yourself fixed up and ready to give to that pressure. Because if you miss it, well, then, then your horse is going to get confused. So one of the hardest things for, for people who are learning this style of horsemanship um, to do is to, to learn to give to pressure quickly enough and to recognize it. Sometimes when you're teaching your horse, now this horse is responding very well to everything I've been doing. Your horse at home may take a little longer to, to get them to, to move to where you want them to move. But if you use the, the techniques that I'm showing you, and you, you're understanding that you're going to be giving pressure gradually and releasing quickly, then you're going to help your horse to, to learn quickly. Horses look for the, the easy way out of things. So if you fix it up for them um, to find an easy way out, then they'll take it. And that's, that goes for the good as well as the bad. If you make it easy for your horse to buck you off or to run off with you, then you'll get bucked off and run off with. But if you make it difficult for them to do that, and when I say difficult, I mean you move their feet with purpose, and when your horse starts to get lost, and you, you all know that feeling if you've been on a horse and it starts to get that hump in its back, or it starts to lay its ears down, or starts to get its muscles to twitch in, um, you know the signs that your horse is starting to get um, a little bit lost and emotional. If you know how to direct that energy, you're going to be far safer with your horse and you're going to be a better leader because the leader's responsibility is to lead the, 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 the followers through the trouble. And that's what exactly what we're doing with our horses. We're leading them through trouble. Uh, the groundwork that we're doing here is, is meant to set up the, the feel and the, not only the respect, but to set up the feel. So everything that I'm doing on the ground has a purpose for riding my horse. The backup is, is obviously part of that, just that little bit of a touch. I want Ultimately, I want to be able to, when, when I just take this, the, the knot of this rope and I just start to twist, tip it up like that, she feels that. I want her to give to that. We're not there yet. I mean, she's just learning this. But she is at that point. That's a far cry from being at this point. Okay? And she learned that quickly. And she learned that quickly because I was able to give to the pressure when she needed me to give. I recognized it. Okay, so that's backing up with, with direct pressure. Now I'm going to ask her to give to back up with indirect. I want to say something real quickly about the, the, the choice of, of rope and knot that I have here. A lot of um, equipment that you would use for this type of exercise, this type of horsemanship, would have a metal um, connector here for the halter to connect to the lead rope. One of the troubles that I have with that is that um, sometimes you have to get kind of, you know, assertive with your horse to back them up or to move them. Sometimes they need that little extra um, bit of pressure. That metal connector can sometimes, in the, you know, if you're just learning to, to use your equipment and you're just learning uh, how to develop a feel, a soft feel, in, in the learning stages you're a little clumsy. And when you're a little clumsy with that, 
that metal connector has a tendency to slam on the side of the horse's uh, cheeks. And, you know, it's not, you know, the, the people who have that, that, um, that practiced feel know uh, how to avoid that. But if you're just starting out, um, you don't want to, you don't want to put your horse in a situation where when they see that halter coming or when you, you start to move around it, that they, they start to fear it. This is not, these are not fear devices. These are communication tools. So my rope does not have a metal connector. It is tied on with, and it has a button, on, button end on it. Um, it. It can come off very easily, but it doesn't have any metal piece that can break or that can cause uh, a little bit of harm there. It does, have, this button end does have some weight to it though. So when I ask her to back up with indirect pressure, this might be something where I'm standing here like this and I'm, and I'm talking and, and I don't want her to be moving off. I want her just to be standing still like she is. If she started to come into me or if you have a horse that crowds your space, you know, you're, constantly, you're talking, you're on the ground and it's constantly coming into you or pushing into you, that, you can't have that, that's disrespectful. So what we do to get those horses to back up, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show her the rope. I'm gonna say, something's coming here, sweetheart, okay? And I'm gonna start to just kind of shake it like this. That's nothing. But because I, I show her around with that direct pressure that when she feels that little tug on there, it means to do something, it means to back up, this is gonna be a lot less uh, painful for her, a lot less traumatic. So now I'm gonna show her the rope again. And I'm just going to very lightly, there, just that little bit of a try, that one little step she took. You know, I may want her to back up four spaces, but we got to get to one before we can get to four. So I'm going to show her that rope again. I'm going to start to look at that. Well, now I'll show just, just a little bit of a, of a little bit of, there, there's another one, and another one, and another one. Every time she takes a step, I stop. This is also going to be helpful for ground time. Because of all the stuff I did with this horse to begin with and asking her to give the pressure, but not only to give the pressure, but to wait until I direct her to move. So when I used the flag and I was going up and down on either side of her without asking her to move, I was asking her just to stand still. That's because I'm trying to get her to understand that not everything means go. But right now this horse is focused on me. There's this whole arena that she can wander off in. There's people over here watching. So she has a lot of things that she can go and investigate. There's another horse outside the door here. But she's focused on me because of the things that we've, we've started with her. So ground tying is important. You know, ground tying for, for working cowboys is important because they have to get down and doctor a calf or, or fix a fence and they have to get off their horse. And, you know, putting hobbles on a horse every time you get off is, is kind of tedious. So you want your horse to ground tie. So by backing your horse up like this and then just dropping the, the rope there, she feels the pressure on this rope because it has a nice weight to it. She's now just waiting for the next cue of what to do. Because I backed her up, now I'm going to tell her it's okay to come to me. But in order to do that, I'm going to do it very lightly. Very lightly. I want her to follow that feel now. She feels that tug. I want her, to, and when she takes a step, I release. Now you'll see that with my hands, I'm not grabbing a hold of the rope and tugging to start with. She feels that, just that little bit there. And I'm crouching down and I'm being very friendly. Now when she comes here, I'll rub her. Okay? If you don't change your expression, your horse can get a little confused. You have to, your, your horses communicate through body language. That's one reason why um, people ask me, is it okay to give verbal cues with their horse, uh, as well as the, the, uh, the physical cues, the, the body language. And I say, it's okay to do that, but you have to be really consistent. That means that you have to use the same verbal cue all the time for that particular thing you want. And you have to say it in the same tone of voice. Because if you say it in a different tone of voice, your horse might misinterpret it. Which is why I prefer to use body language, which I can be more in control of than my voice. Right now we're in February and here in Illinois in the Midwest. It's cold. 
Um, and so my voice is a little different than it would be um, when it's warmer and, and, and so forth. So, you know, I'm, I'm more inclined to use physical cues. So I'm going to show her the rope. I want her to back up. Just going to start to do that a little bit. There you go. Now I'm going to raise the bar. She knows that this needs to back up. So I'm going to keep this up until she backs up far enough. There you go. And I'm just going to drop the, the line and I'm going to back off. So we're doing a couple of things here. We're asking our horse to, to give the pressure to back, to stay out of our space until we're ready. But we're also asking our horse to ground tie. Okay? I ultimately want her to be able to ground tie to the point where I could saddle her in here without having her good, attached to anything. So I'm gonna put the rope right down there and I'm going to walk around her. And I'm going to rub her. And she didn't walk off on me. She's really nice. Oh, this is a really nice horse. She, she like I said, she, she shows that she's <laughs> the bottom of the totem pole out there in the pasture with the other horses. But she's only a five-year-old. She has a lot to learn, but she's got a great disposition. She's willing to learn, and she's, she's really calm and ready. That's really good there. So I hope that you understand for the backing up the two, the two parts, the, the direct pressure and the indirect pressure. If your horse, when you're first working with your horse, don't expect them to just get it like that. It takes time. And, and part of your learning curve is going to be using the equipment and being able to be accurate and not so clumsy with it. So when your horse moves and you didn't want it to move, I want to just briefly uh, recap with that flag. When I'm first introducing the flag to, you know, when you're first introducing a flag or another tool such as this to your horse and you're waving it and your horse starts to move off and you didn't want it to move off, you want the horse to stand still. You fix it up so that it's harder for the horse to move than it is just to stand still. What I mean by that is you're telling your horse, your horse is telling you really that I need to move my feet and, and your horse is telling you that it needs to move its feet because that's how a horse thinks. It thinks through its feet. If it can move its feet, it can think. Okay, so if your horse moves away from you, don't try to hold it from moving. Allow it to move, but don't give up on the flag. Keep the flag moving as well. Okay, keep that nose tipped towards you. So if she were to go, I'm gonna ask her to go around me here. If she were to be moving off this way, I'm going to keep that flag up like this until she stops and relaxes. There. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to rub her. And I'm basically telling her that it is much easier for her to just stand here while this flag is going than it is to, to be moving away from me. And that goes for anything you're doing. Okay. When we get into the riding, one of the things I'm going to say a lot is that when you get into a situation where your horse gets a little lost and you're in the saddle, the same principle applies. A lot of people, their first instinct when their horse um, you know, sees something and gets a little bit uh, uh, spooked on the trail or in an arena and the horse like maybe side passes away from something, the first instinct of most people is to clamp down and ask their horse to stop. What, what I'm going to ask you to do and what, what this type of horsemanship expects you to do is counterintuitive to that. You go with your horse's energy, but you redirect it. Okay, so just like with the flag, if I start moving this flag and she starts backing up there like that, I'm just going to go with it, but I'm going to keep up my purpose. And when she comes back to me and relaxes, then I'll rub. So if my horse side passed away from something on the trail, 
I'm going to go with my horse, side pass way wise, but then I'm going to ask the horse to turn and move its feet in a direction that I want. So what I'm saying to my horse is, it's okay, it's okay to move. I recognize that you are a little bit scared by that, whatever that was, it spooked you. I recognize that and I, and I appreciate that. But here's how we get out of this. I'm going to move you in a way that, that I'm going to direct you in a way that's going to be, uh, help you get out of that, that spookiness or that, that frightened state. And we're going to go together, we're going to regain control, and then we'll figure out the rest from there. That's a lot better than being run off with or bucked off or, or, because if you clamp down and that horse is, is needing to move and you haven't fixed it up for him and you don't have the feel in yourself, you've all been there. You clamp up and that horse, and now you've got a fight on your hands, and it's a fight physically that you're going to lose. So, set it up here on the ground. That's kind of the purpose of all of this, to, to get them to, to give to that pressure, but not only that, but to, but to tolerate some of the things like this and understand that that means st stand still, this means move, okay? But when it's time to move, it's time to move. Now, that was just I had to wake her up a little bit because we haven't done that since we, uh, when we first started. Okay. So now you've got um, the steps on kind of saying hello to your horse by throwing the, uh, the end of the lead rope over your horse's neck and back and also the rump and around the legs. You've got um, moving your horse out from you, sending him out away from you both ways. You've got how to yield your horse's hindquarters with a look first. If your horse doesn't move, you're going to then add some pressure until they do move. If you don't have a flag, you can use the end of your Mercado rein. Okay, you can look at that and you can twirl that rope towards those hindquarters to move them away from you. So yielding the hindquarters is extremely important. Do it with a look, add the pressure either with the end of your, Mercado, your, your lead rope or your flag. We also have uh, the backing up established and we've got um, um, her, the horse standing still for uh, the flag w until we ask the horse to move. So all of those things are kind of the first few steps that I would do with a horse to get it ready to be ridden and re get it ready to learn what I want it to know under saddle. All right, the next thing that my horse needs to know is how to give laterally to pressure. Well, if my horse gets lost, I have to be able to uh, move my horse in, in a circle and direct those feet so that the horse finds it again and it will come back together. So I have to establish that, that on the ground. Now, what I want here to, to, to uh, stress is that sometimes I, I work with horses that have been over flexed. What I mean by that, see how she's, she's kind of reaching down here? She's just wanting to, to sniff on my leg there. But, I work with horses a lot of times and I get to this, this part of my groundwork and they, they want to bend their, their neck down so far and, and touch down here with their nose. And usually people are, are satisfied and look, look how well that they bend. Well, in doing that your horse is off balance. A big, big piece of everything that I do with a horse is about balance and unity. Everything you do with a horse is a dance. And if you're in a dance um, and you're stepping on each other's feet or you're off balance, things aren't going to turn out so well. It's not going to look pretty. It's not going to feel right. So everything has to be balanced. I don't need her to touch her, her nose to establish lateral flexion. I don't need that. I don't need that to establish a turn or even a one ring stop. What I do need is her to be balanced in lateral flexion. So I, I try to look at the horse's ears and try to imagine a level. You know what a level is? A level from a toolbox being across the ears. That bubble in the middle of the level will swing to one side or the other if it's off level. 
So what I'm wanting to do is ask my horse to, to bend laterally, but to keep her head level so that she's balanced. If, she, if her head's all tipped down and reaching towards her, the girth area, she's off balance. And if I'm riding her and we have to stop in a hurry and I try to pull laterally and, and that's what the horse thinks it needs to do is to tip its head way down here, we may just roll over because we're off balance. So what I'm going to do to start, I'm going to bring her over here a little bit. Come with me, sweetheart. What I'm going to do is we're going to do this in increments just like everything else. I take my rope and I'll put a bend in it and I put it over her back. This is where that whole first thing I did with throwing the rope in comes real handy. Okay, so I've got my what looks like reins now. I'm going to take my other hand, in this case my right hand, I'm going to put it on her back and I'm going to be up against my horse. This is a safety issue as well. The closer I am to my horse, the safer I am. If I'm out of way and my horse jumps away or kicks, I'm in the strike zone. Here, if she were to push me this way, all she's doing is pushing me and not kicking me. If my horse starts to wander off that way, I can go with my horse in this position as well. Now, obviously, this is not something I would do at this level with a colt until I've got my colt ready to, for me to be standing here. But this isn't a colt. This is a horse that's got some experience. It's been started under saddle, so, and we've been working part of the day with her. Okay, so just bump her attention. She wants to reach down and grab some of that hay. And we're not, she's been real good about standing here. So we're not, I just want her attention again. Now, if, if I don't have her attention, I'm gonna back off and move this horse a little bit to get her attention. I think we're good now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to just add gentle pressure until she gives towards me. Now if she starts to walk off, I can go with her. I'm just going to hold. There. I want her to follow that feel. Now see how she's tipping that head down there. This horse um, has had been started by somebody else other than myself and she's been taught to, that that's what it means to, to bend laterally. That's not what I'm looking for though. I want that head to stay somewhat level. Every time that she gives to me, I give to her. Right about to there. Now, if she bends her head down, I'm just going to hold my hand with the, with the lead rope up until she comes back up a little bit. And just help her to get rebalanced. Bring that head around a little bit more. If she feels the need to move, I'm going to go with her. Every time she gives to me, I'll give to her. There. Now that she's, that's about as far as I need her to bend laterally at the moment. Okay, now that she's here, I'm going to rub. And her, her ears are still fairly level. She's still balanced. If she needed to, to move those hindquarters away from me, she could do so in this position and still stay balanced. Good. Okay, so I'm going to do that again, hopefully this way with the camera. I'm just, every time she gives to me, I give to her. I release. I release. Right about to... Well, see how she went, she got a little off down, so I'm just going to lift this up there and start again. Let her figure this out. She's like, I thought it, you wanted me to bend way down there. No, just, just like that. She's going to pull on there. She's just a little lost. There. And then I'll rub her. I'll rub her. Again, this is where... You have to understand that everything you do on the ground is setting it up for the saddle. So when you're in the saddle, you don't need her to bend her head way down like this. That's an unsafe position. You might tip over. So you want that a level lateral bend. So now you can ask her to move in a direction that will get her to think, but will also be stay balanced. Do this again. Bring her up a little bit. Ask her to follow that feel. Yeah, yeah. 
that moving off, she's just trying to figure me out. I'm going to there, bring her head up a little bit, just to level her off. And if I have to hold this position, I will, just so she can, she can find it. And I'm going to rub. I want her to get to a point where putting her head over here is a pleasing place to be. So, some of you who have studied natural horsemanship may have been told to bring that horse's nose all the way to the, to the horse's belly, to the girth, and my, my way is just a little different because of that balance issue. Okay, I'm going to do it on this side here. Ask her to give. See how she's learned that, to, to dip way down there. So I'm just, every time she dips her head down, I'm just going to bring the, the, in this case, just to move her feet out to the opposite side. I'm not so concerned if she crosses them over or if she just steps out at this point. I just want her to move her front feet before her hindquarters. And I want her to be able to do it in a way that's kind of tight. Okay, so what I'm teaching her to do is when I get in the saddle and I want to be able to, to turn around, I should be able to have her move, kind of spin on those, her, her pivot on her hindquarters and just move her front feet over. So I'm going to set that up here on the ground. I'm going to take my lead rope and I'm going to maybe have, oh, about an arm's length of rope that's loose. And I'm going to just make some bends. I'm not going to wrap this, this around my hand. Never wrap the, the rope around your hand because uh, if something went wrong, uh, you don't want to lose a finger or anything like that. So if, if your horse pulls away from you, um, usually they'll, they'll pull away a few feet. If you let them um, go, uh, you know, let them drift a little bit, um, before uh, asking them to move, they'll get more confident. If you yank on and that, that rope zips out of your hand, you're going to get what's called a learn, burn, a learn burn. And you, when you get those, you deserve them. So don't wrap the hand, the, the, the rope around your hand or around your, your fingers. Just make some loops, okay? However you, you want to make some loops is fine. You're going to then take, since I'm on the left side of this horse, I'm going to put the loops in my, in my left hand, and I'm going to have my right hand here. And what I'm going to do, just ask her to move over a little bit here so you can see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my thumb right about where if I had a, a halter or a, a, a bit and, and head stall on her, the throat latch would come down here. I'm going to use my thumb to start to add gradual pressure to where she starts to move her head away. There. And this, when she steps out with the other foot, then I'm going to release that pressure. A lot of people have a hard time with this. You're just adding enough pressure with your thumb. You can use your fingers like this if you need to. You use your thumb though to add pressure until she gives and she moves off. And every time she moves, she, she moves to her right, I'm going to rub. It's not time to eat. There's some hay down there, so I'm going to get her attention. Oh. Now this should start to be get lighter and lighter. Every time she steps across, step moves out, I'm going to rub. This hand acts as a block. If she were to try to come this way, I could block. So again, just gentle. Every time she moves her head away, I'm going to take that pressure off. Now you'll notice that she's keeping her ears level for me. We established that right here. We established that on the lateral flexion. So as you're doing this, you won't want to get the same thing. If she starts to drip, droop her head, you can ask her to come back up with the, with the rope. Very nice. Very nice. 
Like I said, in the beginning stages of, of the groundwork, I'm not as concerned about whether she steps out or she steps across. At this point, I just wanted to try to keep those hind quarters a little bit still, kind of planted, and move her four quarters first. Good. Always do it on the other side, then just switch hands. Put the rope coils in your right hand, and now just use your left hand to get that pressure. She will resist there, but I'm in a position with my thumb. Good. Well, I can just use my thumb and my hand there, 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 there. 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 I just hold here. Let her find it. She was kind of pushing against me. Now, now we got it. Good. 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 Again, in these early stages of the groundwork, we're just trying to get the, the, the movements and the give to pressure and start to develop that precision. Good. Okay, so that's the direct pressure. The indirect pressure, since I'm on the side, I'll, I'll just stay here. Again, my, hand is in the, my left hand is in the same position. My right hand with the rope is going to be the pressure hand now. This is not. This is the supporting hand. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start to, sh to move this. If I needed to use my flag, I could. I'll demonstrate that in a second, but I'm going to use this first. I'm just going to kind of... Go like this, and every time she moves away, I'll stop. Now I'm going to give her a bit there, there, there. Now as she moves away from that pressure, I'm with my left hand now, I'm rubbing. Now if she didn't move, good. If she didn't move after I did three little shakes like that, I, it's okay to bump. Don't bump her eye. Kind of bump the cheek area right here. So here, there. She moves so I could take that pressure out. But if she didn't, I could bump. Just kind of bump. Good. Every time she, she gives, I can rub. Switch hands. And you do it the other side. One, two, three. Kind of a, a little gather. One, two, three. I'm going to start the bump just to kind of demonstrate that. Good. 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 So your energy, see, is moving the horse. Energy moves the horse. Good. Good. There. There. So your energy can move the horse. You don't even have to touch. So that's moving the, the front end around and starting to establish that if I want my horse to turn around and face the other direction, I don't have to do a wide circle. I can fix it up, since I fix it up on the ground, I can get my horse now just to turn and kind of pivot to look the other direction. This is a, a technique that is used primarily to get horses ready to, for, to do some cow work as well. It's very helpful for that. Okay, the last thing that I am going to show you is just leading. It's something very simple um, that I, I see a lot of people doing um, that is uh, it's not very helpful for their horse. Uh, when you're leading with your horse and you're walking, you guys need to be together. Your horse, you and your horse need to be together. Your horse should not be lagging behind or going ahead of you. You shouldn't have to drag it along or it, 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 uh, use a lot of pressure to move it or, or having to catch up to your horse. You want your horse just behind your shoulder and you want to be able to do this where you're just walking at a normal pace and your horse follows your pace. So if I slow down and walk slower, she should walk slower. And this is something that's very handy to do. If I stop, she needs to stop. See how she went past me? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back her up. 
And then I'm going to take a step forward. We're going to walk. If I stop, that's better. She needs to stop and be with me. If I take a step, she needs to take a step. Now, if I need to back up, remember what I showed you about that back up? Okay? I might just get a little bit more energy to my body. Take a step forward. Stop. Back up. Take a step. And back up. This is a very simple thing you can do. Just walking from the barn to the pasture, from the pasture to the barn, that will help your horse to be with you. Your horse, like I said, should not be crowding your space, it, and it shouldn't be running in front of you. You need to be together. Like I said, it's a dance. Now, one of the reasons why horses have such a hard time with people on their right side is because most people are right-handed, and they, they lead their horse from the left side. So make sure that you can do this on both sides. Just change positions. Now, if she were to lag behind or try to drift off, so she she wants to put me, she wants to be, she wants me to be on her left side. See how she's kind of not sure about being there. So I can use the end of my Maccabi rein, or excuse me, my uh, lead rope kind of drive her off, and if I have to, I can just swing it a little bit more in her direction, and say just, if you're, if you're going to drift over there, there's pressure over there. Now stop, that was good, and I'll back up, just kind of get a little bit bigger, good, and we'll walk on again. You can also use the flag. That's better. And back up. You can use your flag if you don't want to use the, the uh, lead rope to drive them off. Just keep the flag here and just drop her off if she decides to, to drift over there. She wants to put me on her left side because she's just not as confident with that, I can use that flag every time she drifts over to my right. Good. Back up. So how protective she still is of that right side. We've still got work to do. It's not a finished product today. That's better. Step and back. Your horse should not be directly behind you when you're leading because that's a dangerous position for you. But make sure that you can do this on both sides. And this, like I said, is a very easy way to just work on some groundwork just when you're leading your horse to the bar. Okay. So those are the, the basic beginning steps of my groundwork. Everything that I've shown you in this groundwork today uh, has a purpose for the saddle. So this is the, the basic level. Um, I hope that something that I've shown you with this will inspire you to go on out and work with your horse and to, to, to understand that you need to be a little more precise with where your horse's feet are going and where they are. Um, I, I encourage you to, to really uh, work at this and understand that when you're first starting out, everybody, when you start something new, when you start something new, you're going to be a little awkward at it. So give yourself a break. You know, practice with the equipment in, the, in your living room, you know, uh, or, or just, you know, practice with your flag and, and switching hands even. Just, just that little maneuver takes some practice because you're concentrating where your horse is going, what your horse is doing, what you're supposed to be doing. So the equipment is going to come second nature. And that takes practice. Give yourself a break. Your horse will be tolerant with you on this. Okay? The, the, the thing of it is that, just like anything else, you, you need to give some time. It takes time. Uh, don't set a timetable. Don't say, I'm going to get this done in the next five minutes, or I'm going to get this done in the next week. 
take the time that it takes to get it done right, and then move on to the next step.